In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we'll start our new lesson for the third secondary grade. English subject, second semester, unit 5, reading, writing, mega goal 6. This lesson is prepared by Mr. Muhammad al-Bahiri and presented by Muhammad al-Thaymi. In this lesson, you can read an article titled Invented Languages. Write an email to a friend giving news and discussing differences between your language and English. Warm up. What do you think an invented language is? Do you think such a language could be successful? Invented means a created, that someone created it or a company created it. It's not, uh, it didn't come naturally. Like Arabic is not invented, it's natural language. It developed uh, through histories, English. But invented language is something else. What do you think? Think about the term invented language. Excellent. Languages which are invented by people. So, do you think such a language could be successful? When someone invents a language, do you think it will succeed? Okay, now we are going to read a, a text about invented languages. And by the end of this text, we will have some questions. So, let's listen. Invented languages. Every language has its flaws and limitations. Some people have been so frustrated with the imperfections of existing languages that they have actually tried to create better languages themselves. There have been more than 500 attempts at creating such languages. Each of these invented languages, complete with a vocabulary and grammar of its own, has had a specific goal. For example, some language inventors have wanted to invent a simple and easy to learn language. Some have wanted to create a gender neutral language. And some have wanted to make language more mathematical or scientific. While none of these invented languages has ever become widely spoken, there are a couple that have been learned and spoken by a surprisingly large number of people. The invented language that has the most speakers is Esperanto. This language was created in 1887 by Ludwig Zamenhof, a Russian doctor. Zamenhof lived in an area populated by four different ethnic groups that spoke many different languages. There were a great number of problems between these groups. Zamenhof felt that the language difference between the groups was the root of the problems. This gave him the idea of creating a language that would not belong to any one country or culture, but instead would belong equally to all people. The hope was that a neutral second language would break down language barriers and build a sense of equality and brotherhood between nations. The language which he created to fulfill this dream was called Esperanto which means hope in the Esperanto language. Because Zamenhof's goal was clearly a humanitarian one, he was not interested in making any money from Esperanto. He published a guide to speaking Esperanto and gave up all rights of ownership to the guide. This way, the guide could be freely circulated to all people interested in learning the language. Zamenhof wanted as many people as possible to learn Esperanto, 
So he made the language extremely simple, with no irregularities or exceptions to the basic rules. For example, in Esperanto, all nouns end with an O. All nouns can be made plural by simply adding a J. So the word for friend is amico, and the plural is amicoge. All adjectives end with an A. To create the opposite meaning, a speaker simply adds mall to the beginning of the word. So, for example, the word for big is granda, and the word for small is mall granda. The rules for verbs are equally simple, with no irregular verbs and no conjugation. For all Zamenhof's good intentions, Esperanto never became the unifying international language he had hoped it would become. People were not eager to spend time learning a new language, which so few other people spoke. However, Esperanto has survived to this day and is spoken by at least 100,000 people around the world. So, now we have read and listened to this new language made by Zaman, Zamenhof, this language called Esperanto. We have four questions and we want to find out the answers of these questions. What are some reasons people have created invented languages? People have their own reasons to invent languages. What are the reasons? Do you remember? Okay, we will go back to find out the answer of this question. It's here. Some language, <clears throat> some language inventors have wanted to invent a simple and easy to learn language. Some have wanted to create a gender neutral language. And some have wanted to make language more mathematical or scientific. So this is the answer of the first question. The second question. How did where Zamenhof lived inspire him to create Esperanto? Zamenhof had lived in a place, and this place which, where he lived inspired him to create Esperanto. How did it become? How did it happen? Okay. Here's the answer here. Zamenhof lived in an area populated by four different ethnic groups that spoke many different languages. There were a great number of, of problems between these groups. Some have felt that the language differences be between the groups was the root of the problems. So he thought that the differences or the difference uh, of the language was the root of the problem among the or groups he lived um, uh, between them. So the answer is here. Zamenhof lived close to four different ethnic groups that spoke four different languages <coughs> and that didn't get along well, uh, very well. He thought the language difference between the groups was the root of the problem and that they would get along better if they spoke the same language. The third question. A villa means beautiful in Esperanto. What is the word for ugly? Beautiful, the opposite of beautiful, ugly. So when we want to make the opposite in Esperanto, what should we add? Let's go back to the text. 
here. And to create the opposite meaning, a speaker simply add mal to the beginning of the word. For example, uh, here if the for example the word for big is granda and the word for small is mal granda. So he added mal. So let's go back to the questions. Bella means beautiful. What's the opposite of Bella? Excellent. Mal Bella. Mal Bella. The answer is Mal Bella. Okay. Why did Why didn't Esperanto become an international second language? It is easy. Easy to learn. And uh, it has. Also, uh, there is no irregular verbs, nor no irregularity. Why didn't it become the an international second language? Just small amount of people who are talking or speaking in this language. Let's find the answer of this question. Here. People were not eager to spend time learning a new language which so few other people spoke. So here is the answer. Esperanto never became the unifying international language he had hoped it would become because people were not eager to spend time learning a new language which so few other people spoke. So this is the answer of the fourth question. And here I group the, uh, the all answers in one page without writing the questions if you want to write them. <coughs> After we read this this text and answered these questions, we have another subject, which is writing. Now we will study how to write. How to write an email to a friend. When you write an email to a friend, greet and sign your letter in a in an informal manner. Not formal, informal. Example, hi, hello, like this. This is informal. Dear, plus first name and best or best wishes or see you soon. Take care, plus your first name. Write as if you were spoken, speaking to him or her. That is, use contracted forms and emotions. We will have examples. Okay, let's find these hints in the following example. Hi, Vidriya. How are you? Uh, how are you doing? Did you have a good summer? How is school? I guess you're just uh, like, uh, look at here. It started in informal way. She didn't say, Dear Badria, I'm writing this for you to, to inform you that I'm doing so and so. No. She started informally because she's writing to her friend. First she greeted and used an uh, informal manner. Then she write, if we are speaking, uh, uh, and used contracted forms and emotions. Okay, when you want to compare two or more entries, identify different aspects or components of the entries that you are comparing. For example, language, spoken versus written language. 
varieties and speakers appropriateness that is formal or informal language vocabulary words phrases expressions idioms etc think of examples and consider similarities and differences for example with language think of situation and consider what people might want to convey to each other and what kind of language they would use now let's go to read our sample to find out what we have studied here hi Vidria how are you doing did you have a good summer how is school I guess you're just started again, right? Well, that's life for all of us. This is my first week back at high school. It has been an exciting week. I have made lots of new friends, and we have a new French teacher, Miss Brown. She is a great teacher, but I, admit, but I must admit that I am finding French very difficult. There are so many grammar rules to learn. I thought I knew them all, and then Miss Brown gives, me, gives us another one. I can't keep up. And there are many new words which I can't pronounce properly. But Miss Brown, Brown says this, uh, that it is okay if I don't say them perfectly. Just as long as people can understand me. She told me that what important is that I try to communicate. That made me feel a bit bitter, but I still think French is much harder than English. English has lots more words, but the grammar is so easy in, compar in comparison. Oh well, I must keep trying hard to learn French. I suppose and one day I will be able to speak as well as you. But he, he used here em uh, emojis. Guess, guess what? My parents have given me their permission to come and stay with you during the school holidays. Isn't that cool? We should chat soon and make plans. Well, time to go and study my French homework. I've attached a photo of me with, <clears throat> sorry, within my, uh, within my summer vacation. Do you have any photos from your summer vacation? Well, bye for now and spend, send me all your news soon. Your friend, Jussie. So we can find here that this email is informal. She's just writing as if she is speaking. Okay, now we will have an exercise. <clears throat> Write an email to an international ePAL and explain how your language is si similar to different or different to English. Now try to write an email to international people and explain how your language is similar or different to English. Of course you you can start formally or informally because you are not writing to your friend. Okay, we come to the end of our today's lesson, and this is the summary of what we have studied. First of all, we had comprehension exercise, we have the text, then we have questions and answers, and these are the answers of the questions we have uh, studied. Then we studied writing and how to write to uh, a friend. We said Greek, 
or and sign your letter and in, in informal manner greet with uh, hi hello dear plus first name and sign with best or best wishes see you soon take care plus your first name then write if you were speaking to him or her that is use uh, contracted forms and emotions Okay, when you want to compare two or more entries, identify different aspects, comp components of entries that you are comparing, that is language, spoken versus written language, variety and speakers, appropriateness, that is formal or informal language, vocabulary, words, phrases, expressions, idioms, etc and think of examples and consider similarities and differences example with language think of situations and consider with uh, what people might want to convey to each other and what kind of language they would use oh.